Hey guys, welcome back. I am here to show you the latest edition of Simply Sewing Magazine. I received this yesterday or the day before and I just opened it. I actually just opened it on camera, but I felt like I spent way too much time rambling on. So I'm going to refilm this without the rambling. So I have flipped through it once, but um, I'm going to show it to you now. So most of the Simply Sewing magazines come with two patterns. This month's patterns are the Aisling's dress and the Tamsin top. Now I feel like these are pretty much the same pattern. The dress has a waistband and the top just goes straight down. Normally in the past, and I've only missed one issue, I missed the issue before this one because I couldn't decide if I was going to resubscribe. I wanted to, but I already have so many patterns, I just wasn't sure I needed to. And then I decided, ah, what the heck, let's do it. And so these are super cute. Um, they're kind of fabric hogs. This one takes um, three and a half yards of fabric and the top takes two and three quarter yards. And I think it's because of those sleeves. Sleeves can be real fabric hogs. And so these are um, kind of a modified bishop sleeve. They're not as full as a bishop sleeve, but still, those are going to take up some real real estate on your yardage. I think both of them are cute, and I would make and wear both of them. So here's our magazine. Let's get into it. It always has a beautiful cover. These are just really pretty magazines. Here's a couple of um, Tilly patterns, the um, Saren dress, and the Stevie tunic. The Stevie tunic has taken the sewing um, community by storm. Um, I'm probably one of the few people that won't be making it. It's just not my aesthetic. Um, I do think it looks adorable on other people. It's just not something I'm interested in making. This is Amy Nicole. She has a YouTube channel and she's very nice. I like her channel. Um, she's a fledgling pattern designer and this was her first um, pattern that she designed. And what it is, there are these three, these are three separate pieces. Um, and so it's a swingy crop top, a tank, and a dress. And they're all reversible. So it's really um, clever and you know, you can have tons of different outfits from that. They always have a book section. <clears throat> Just little blurbs. Here's a picture of some of the magazines. I missed this one in my indecisive time, which I'm sad about because look at that collar. I love a V-neck collar with a little collar on it, a V-neckline with a collar. So I don't know if they're, if, I don't know if you can buy back orders. Okay. So in addition to the paper patterns, you always get a ton of other kinds of patterns. There are always stuffed toys of some sort. There's always things to use around your home. Okay, so look at this. These are cool um, storage pods. And look, there's a big one. These are super cute. I would, I would make this for my sewing room. And what if you hung some of these off the edge of your um, sewing machine and put your thread in it? I have to put my thread in a jar with a lid on it because I have cats. And while they have never so far eaten thread tails um, because they're too busy eating plastic and throwing that up on the carpet... Um, I just don't want them to get it. Um, thread's dangerous for all pets. I believe it can actually, they can die from it. So um, this is also really cute. I love this idea for a bath mat. Slippers, all these patterns are going to be in here, or you're going to be able to download them from the website. It's just stuffed. I really feel like the value in this magazine is there. It's stuffed with projects to make. If you, if you didn't buy anything, any other patterns, each of these issues could keep you busy for a month's worth of sewing, I think. Sewing and gift giving. This is um, highlighting these things, which are you can buy separately to, I don't know if they're sew on or iron on, but patches are pretty big. 
I really like this. This is instructions to make this gorgeous circle skirt with a bottom band, and I just think she's adorable with her curly hair. And also, you get the petticoat. Drafting the pattern for the petticoat, and, you know, it tells you how to do all of that. So, I mean, I think that's really cool. You get all of this information. This is a hack of the Sew Over It Silk Cami, which we received um, in, you know, another issue. I have this pattern and so from issue 43. And so now here I can turn it into a dress or I can put a button placket down it. It's going to show me how to do that, which I really like. I feel like stuff like this can help increase your skill set. I'm kind of a beginner to inner advanced beginner to intermediate sewer, I believe. And because I'm still, you know, I'm not that experienced, I don't really imagine in my head a lot of pattern hacks. And I feel like doing stuff like this will help open your mind to the possibilities that are available in other patterns. And I think once you get into doing this, your mind learns how to do that. It's just like anything, like learning how to ride a bike. And so these things are really great, um, especially for beginners and intermediates to build your skill set and to get your mind thinking of the possibilities. <clears throat> you can tell by my, by my voice that I've already filmed this once, can't you? Okay, so there's that. <clears throat> This is an interesting article um, about handmade wardrobes. Make your time, money, and sewing talents go further by creating everyday essentials. Of course, I haven't read this because I just opened this article, this magazine, 20 minutes ago and then filmed a video and then didn't like the video and now I'm doing it again. But I will point out that this Sonia Phillip was in um, that So News. So I haven't read anything about her. I don't know who she is. Um, I think she's an author, and so I'll have to read this and see what she has to say. Here's another person, Jessica Waldegar. I also don't know her. But after I read this, then I will know these people. So it always features the patterns. It gives you a nice layout, a full um, picture of the model. You can get style ideas. She's wearing lace espadrilles with her top and then over here oh see here they are twenty dollars from man mandco.com mandco.com so um, 20 pounds not dollars but this is all they always include a um, what do you a wear it with you know and some fabric suggestions so I like that now, this is another thing that I really like about this magazine. Every issue includes an upcycle project. And so in this one, I still wasn't able to determine, um, even in my last video, whether you're adding another knit or whether this is a woven. I couldn't see that it said, but I haven't read it very closely. So these are designed by Jenny Jones, and it gives you the instructions on how to do that. I hope that this is a woven and that you're adding a woven fabric to the back of a knitted t-shirt, because I think that would be cool. But I couldn't tell at just a glance whether that was the case or not. It's a little pattern for a coin pouch. This I'm very interested in. Let me get this up where you can see it. This is the pattern and the how-to for a round purse. And I don't know about you, but if, I mean, if you have been interested in fashion at all over the summer, you have known that these round purses are very, very much in right now. And it tells you everything you need to know how to make one. And I think I might try to do that. This, I don't know what this article's about. This gal named Karen Lewis, she's a quilter, I believe. Here's a journal cover. I'm sure the pattern will be in here, the instructions to do it. Here's Karen Lewis's hexi cushion. We call those pillows in the U.S. Cushions, in the U.S., a cushion is 
<clears throat> the big part of a chair or a couch, the part that you sit on. And a pillow, we call them throw pillows, those are the little accent things that you throw around the couch. Um, or in my husband's case, on the floor. So, and he says, well, Carla, they're called throw pillows for a reason. So, you know, that's how he is. I think this is pretty much designed for a 9 by 13 but they probably couldn't find as pretty a 9 by 13 as that. So that's cool. If you ever go a-visiting or do church potlucks or any kind of potluck, this is great to have. Art gallery fabrics. Look how pretty that is. Oh, and this... Hmm. Petal quilt. It shows you how to do that. I love these. But living in Colorado, I don't really decorate in a seaside theme. But I still think they're adorable. I love the colors they chose. I love this photograph. I think the photographs in this magazine are beautiful. That might be one reason why this magazine appeals to me so much. It's such a pretty magazine. Their graphic designers are phenomenal. Every single page looks appealing. Like here to learn how to make the little um, hanging decorations, that looks appealing. You want to look at it, you want to read it. Their color coordination and their layout is phenomenal every single time. And then every single article also includes um, patterns for stuffed toys, and they are the cutest stuffed toys. And this little bear comes with his own quilted bed. Can you picture adorable little hands playing with that? They would love that. Stuffing that bear in and out of there, stuffing everything they own in there, and then taking it out. You know that age, what is that, about 15 months when they're sitting up really well and they're playing with stuff and they like to put things in things and then take them back out. That's adorable. All the directions to do that. I like this. This is a string backpack. I have a um, after school sewing program and um, we meet once a week. I teach at a middle school and my kids would love this. And I actually don't think that this is too young for middle schoolers. I think that they would enjoy this. I think they would enjoy making it. I think they would love picking out their fabrics and I think they would carry it happily. Um, they get so excited about their makes, you guys. It is a real pleasure um, to be around them. Their enthusiasm is uh, second to none. And boy, they keep me hopping. I mean, I'm exhausted when that's all done, but it is worth it because they are into it. Dog bow tie, or maybe people too. No, it's for dogs. Every issue carries this, has this layout in it. This is the guide, and it tells you what tools you need. It tells you how to measure, how to choose and buy your fabric, how to match your machine needles to your fabric. And then there's also a glossary and a stitch guide. Um, this stitch guide, I believe, um, is always pertinent to the articles that were in that issue. But anyway, this is a great beginner's guide. So this, I feel like a subscription to this magazine would be a phenomenal gift for a new sewer. And then the back pages always have um, a preview of what's coming next month. Now, I know I don't like that. That is a no, no, no for me. But these two, I do like. And there's that curly girl again. I love mustard. Love the color. Mm. That would not look good on me at all. And then this, I find this just odd. I cannot imagine why anyone, unless you have no ass at all, why you would want these giant pleats. This is, wow. Not for me. Definitely won't be making that. Because, mm -mm, nope, wouldn't do it. But look, she has a cute circle bag. Okay, 
So, do I think this is worth whatever it is I pay for it? Yes, I do. This will be my second year to subscribe to it, and I'm bummed that I missed that one issue. I might try to figure out if we can order individual issues and see if I can get that, because it drives me crazy that I don't have issue 45. That's a little bit of the, uh, well, the crazy person in me. All right, guys, just wanted to show you that. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think it's worth subscribing to? Are you considering subscribing to it? Um, let me know. Have a great day. Bye-bye.